Let's talk about our ROH show. Um, I guess uh, we should probably talk about the news coming out of it and then go back and, and we can recap the show. But uh, Samoa Joe comes out after the main event is over in which Jonathan Gresham retains his title against Bandito. And uh, Jay Lethal had turned heel earlier in the night, came out, attacked Gresham, him and Sanjay Dutt. Joe comes in, saves the day, chokes out Sanjay. Jay's on the outside, and then uh, he and Gresham, uh, you know, kind of just hanging out in the ring there as the show goes off the air. So uh, it sounds like... It looks like Gresham and Lethal, it looks like the program, and Joe involved too, because they really pushed the idea of Joe, um, you know, Joe and uh, Jay Lethal's uh, history, you know, because when Ring of Honor started, or very early in the Ring of Honor era... Um, Jay Lethal under a different name, you know, was like the protege of Samoa Joe. Right. Yeah. No. Uh, and so, but it sounds like Joe is all uh is AEW as well, right? Well, everyone's both. You know, it's not like they're exclusive for one or the other. I just would, uh, you know, um, you know, it's one. You know, it's just under a different name. I mean, Paul Turner was the referee, and and uh, you know, a lot of the guys on this show were Ring of Honor guys. So yeah. What did you think of the production? Um, I mean, it wasn't as it was better than Ring of Honor, and it wasn't as good as AEW. Is that what you'd say? What I would say? Yes, that's what I would say. But do you think it was by design to do it that way to try and make it seem a little bit more like an ROH show and a little bit less like an AEW show? Probably. But honestly, I think that, you know, the weakness of Ring of Honor was always the production. So to try to be like, you know, tr- to try to copy their weakness, I don't think is a great idea. The um, the other thing is, is that, you know, do you want to spend the money on something that is not going to drive the money? Um, but I don't know that, like, again, do you want to present a product that is less than because, I mean, the whole thing is, is like. <sighs> The, the Ring of Honor, you know, I, I mean, Ring of Honor never made money. Um, it was never financially successful. Um, you know, it might have made, I shouldn't say that. It might have made money during that one period with the Young Bucks and Cody and everything when, when they were selling out everywhere and all that. But even then, it wasn't like Sinclair never, you know, never spent money on it or else they could have been where, where AEW is now, um, you know, really. Or close, maybe not quite there, but close because they, you know, a lot of the success also has to do with being on TNT and TBS, but um, which they wouldn't have had. But um, I, I, you know, I would, I, I mean, the weakness of Ring of Honor was always the production, especially to, you know, when you want to expand the audience to other people. And, and granted, expanding the audience is very, very difficult when you are, unless you are either number one or you are at least fighting number one. And Ring of Honor will be neither of those. So um, not that, you know, I mean, uh, I mean, the show was fantastic, I thought. I mean, not everything was fantastic, but the key stories were were fantastic, I thought. So in the post uh, post show presser, Samoa Joe said that uh, he knew he, he had he had re-signed with WWE because of Triple H and uh, William Regal, and he knew when the regime changed that the writing was going to be on the wall for him. And he also said that he had pushed WWE to buy the ROH library when he was there. Um, so those were his notes a- a- about WWE. Well, you know, uh, there, there was there was there was um, um, a period, and it would have been I'm going to say 2018, where. I'm, in fact, it was 2018, where where WWE and Ring of Honor were in were in talks about selling the company, you know, buying the whole company, mm-hmm. not just the library. So, um, but they would have shut it down, you know, they would just use the library, right? But you know, they never came to a deal. And then uh, another big part of the show was after the FTR match, which we'll talk about a little bit more detail in a second. Uh, great match with the Briscoes. They win the titles, and then the Young Bucks come out, and they shoot an angle for a match on Dynamite 
on Wednesday. So they utilized... It's kind of weird because they didn't really utilize AEW TV to push this show. There was like one mention last... There was uh, one one mention and it was not a big one. Yeah. But then they used this show, which is going to have less eyeballs than the TV for sure to oh, yeah. sit, to push an angle on, on Dynamite. So not just uh, push the angle but to also announce two matches. Yeah, what were the other matches? Um well that the FTR and Young Bucks and Christian Cage against Adam Cole. Oh, I didn't I didn't see, I must have fast forwarded through the other one. Yeah, yeah. Um okay, so then um when when it came to uh the Tully Blanchard surprise it was Brian Cage and Tony Khan said uh, in the in the presser that he couldn't really tell Cage about his vision when he did uh, when he when he did secure the option year because of NDAs and so he, he kind of had to stay secret on that a little bit. But this is this is why they uh, they took that option on him was to do this. With yeah, Tony Blanchard. It, yeah, yeah. It, 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 that's what I figured as soon as I saw him. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, so just a couple more news bits from his uh, his press room, then we'll talk about the show. He said, no TV de- deal news as of yet. Uh, he said there were 2,000 fans in the building. Uh, and he says that the FTR match and the, Bris- the FTR versus the Briscoes match, he thought was was the reason why they, they were selling more tickets. He mm-hmm. said the streaming numbers shocked him. Really? Yeah, he said. Well, we got we got way more response that, and I haven't looked in in last hour or two. But we got way more response than I would have expected. More than you know we we would usually get for a Ring of Honor show. So I think a lot of people. Were, I think there was a lot of curiosity. Um, so um, that's interesting. I'll have the TV numbers uh, probably by midweek. I don't think the TV. Well, I don't, I don't want to. You know, whatever. Maybe they'll be good. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, that's interesting. He, he talked about uh, running an ROH show during an AEW pay-per-view weekend, but was kind of joking about wanting to get out of Dallas because it's WrestleMania weekend. Yeah. And, and you know, maybe, maybe if they do do something like this again during WrestleMania weekend, he's like, I just got to get out of here on Friday, but then I don't want to run against my own show again. Um, yeah, I... I, I, I... <sighs> It's hard to say what you would do. Um, you know, to me, for them, I wouldn't want to be near WrestleMania. Yeah, it's when I just think that it, it's it's not a good look for them. They I don't think cre- they can create their own thing. Right, they should create their own big. Now, as far as them creating like their own big weekend type of a thing, um, I mean, I think it would be a good idea. It would be, uh, you know, some like let's say Chicago, because um, it's too soon for Vegas. So let's say Chicago in uh, Labor Day. Um, do Saturday night Ring of Honor pay per view if you want to do if you want to play the game, um, and it's not the worst idea because at that point, um, you know you'll have your captive audience in Chicago and thousands of people from all over the country coming in, and uh, I think that I think that works. Wednesday, um, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yep, yep, exactly. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio. We got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 Audio shows at your fingertips.